All right, here's the tricky thing about black shape logo design is that the more complicated you make it, the weaker each component becomes, right? So the whole idea of less is more. So I'm attracted to this because it really focuses me on the wings and on the serpent and on some activity like it's being birthed. And I was thinking if I do all of this, though I like it, it kind of takes away from the whole. So maybe there's a way I can split the difference and just use this tail at the bottom that's kind of split. And add that on to what I already have. Right? So I'll just make a few of these. This has happened a few times to me. I get kind of hung up trying to get the pin tool to start. There we go. So I'm just using this pen tool, same procedure, pulling out the curves and then holding down command to control the curve coming out of each anchor, holding down command to push back that curve. Doing command Z when I'm not sure what would be best. And though we're just starting out at this you want your, your vector shapes to be just as smooth and flowy as possible. And that can be hard to achieve. So it's fine to struggle with it and to have to adjust it and modify it later. Especially just using this, these freeware resources, which are a little bit trickier than the Adobe Illustrator's like industry standard. And if you want to use Illustrator for it, remember that that's how I teach the morning section. So you'll see that in the YouTube channel. All right, so now I close the path. I can double click it. I can add an anchor point if I need to. I can select and delete anchor points if I need to. I can adjust curves holding down command and just get it to be exactly what I want. That looks pretty good. So now if I fill it with black, turn off its stroke. Oh, I got to select it first. Instead of just sticking to my sketch, I'm thinking how I can refine it. I can copy it, Command C, and then paste it, Command V. And then I can just turn this one off for the time being. And then play with this. And I can do things like flip it vertically, flip it horizontally, rotate it. Yes. So this is all just with the, the basic kind of selection of it. Then you can really modify. And then I can overlap it with this image and maybe get closer to what I want. I can shrink it.
and try modifying my sketch a little bit. Let's try flipping it again, rotating it. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then maybe I just want one other little accent. So I'm going to make a new path. This little spiral at the end, it's kind of a cool shape. Comes to a nice point. Hold down command. Pull it back. Remember, you can always modify it later. You just need to get around to the beginning. Command plus to zoom in. And because of this spiral, I'm just letting it set the curves for me. And I'm just making, adjusting it as best I can. Getting back to the beginning. And then to modify it, double click on it, right? Can move my anchor points around, can make new anchor points. What I love about making new anchor points is then it will split the difference between the one that was there and it will kind of create the curves for me. Or I can modify using command. Or I can corner. If you get into trouble, you can always hit Command Z. All right, so that's a pretty good shape. Might add another anchor point right there and then just push it up a little bit. Yeah. All right, now I can fill it, get rid of the stroke, turn off my sketch underneath, Duplicate it, Command C, Command V, paste it in. I gotta get that Command C, Command C, Command V, paste it, and then hide the original and lock it. And now, see if there's a way to finish it off with this. And that works pretty well. I can try flipping it. and maybe rotating it a little bit. And that, I like that. I think that's getting to where I want because it still suggests kind of clouds and it flying above the clouds, but also kind of writhing free and splitting out of something. Okay. Another thing I can do is hold down shift and select the whole thing and then hold down shift and distort it to get slightly different angles. Give me a little bit more space and then if I want to I can double click it and I can play with these anchors. Maybe thin this out a little bit. This is a good instance where I need to add another anchor point so I can move them and even them out, even out that curve.
So these just these little uneven curves can take up a lot of your time. All right, we're just going to go with that for now. So if this is my, my logo, then I'm going to make sure I export it. And the only option I have without being a premium member is that's a, a vector is SVG. So I want to make sure it's downloaded as an SVG. Don't worry about the pixels because it's a vector. It doesn't matter. Now, I go to Photo-P. Good old Photo-P. And what I'm going to open is a new project. I'm not going to open the SVG file. This is important because I don't want to rasterize it. I'm going to call my new project my name and then assignment for black shape logo. because I made the best vector I could. And the size, I'm going to make 350 pixels per inch in inches, 8 by 10 inches. This is our print size. So not only am I making it so I can put my logo up to Canvas to turn in for the assignment, I'm also making it print ready. And this is how you can make everything print ready for your midterm. You make an 8 by 10, 350 pixels per inch white image then i go to my downloads where my svg is for my assignment and i drag and drop that in that is a vector it comes in as a smart object when you look at the screen you see that black space around the white rectangle that is your mat that black space is your mat you get to decide how you want your black logo to appear I can just hold down option, grow it from the middle, right? On your paper. And then you hit return and it will place it. Now this is a smart object, right? You never want to rasterize it. So I'm going to mark it as green. But because it is a smart object based on a vector, no matter what resolution I bring it in, it's going to be as clean as it can for whatever the resolution is of the picture space. Does that make sense? So I've got this nice clean logo. Now, how do I submit it for Canvas? I turn off the background. So it's free floating. And then I say file export as a PNG. Bless you. So that's going to go to downloads. And I now have this PNG that I can put to Canvas. Because what are the assignment uh, requirements? You have a refined sketch. And then you have to have a clean black shape vector for printing. So it has to be at least 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch. I do 350. So this is saved as a PNG with no background 